let me just check that you all think you are coming to do a course on all the other menus in Parish Online. Otherwise, I'm just dumped. Um, usual notice, which you're all familiar with, so I'm not going to bore you with it. But basically, just to say, you will indeed be getting a copy of this presentation and the recording. So you can go through it in slow time afterwards, should you wish. Um, incidentally, it's, it's interesting, very few people download the presentations. Weird. All this trouble and no one wants them. Okay, what we're going to do today is go through all the menu items that are not in the top row. Uh, and then we'll have a play at the end where I hope you'll find some tricky, or not tricky, but interesting new ways of doing things that probably have never been attempted before uh, by you. So moving right on, there will be an interactive session um, if time allows, which I think it will today. So um, again, you've all done this before, so no comments there. Uh, what we're going to talk about today then are the second row menus, which are in the top left corner of your screen in this little black section. Uh, and there are icons with no names on them. The names do come up if you hover your mouse over them. But we're going to be dealing with home, previous view, drag zoom, annotate layer, and search layers. Most of which are good names, actually, they make sense. Um, so the home button, top left corner, clicking on the house, it returns you to your starting page, uh, the one that you always open up on. So it gives you a, a, a starting point, if you will, uh, with the boundary layers turned off. So if you had other layers turned on, they remain turned on, but you go back to a known starting point. <clears throat> so that's the home button, that's easy. Uh, the second button, previous view, very much uh, what it says it does. It takes you back to where you were on your previous screen. And if you have lots of previous screens, it'll take you back through all of them. What is weird is that if you had a layer turned on on the previous screen, then that remains turned on no matter how far back you go. But any layers that you had in screens before the first one uh, get turned off. So it sort of takes a little bit of getting used to, and I don't know many people who find a need to go back to the previous screen, but uh, it can be helpful. I just going to shut my door here because I've heard other voices coming in. In case we have a noisy fighting cabinet. Okay, so next one we're going to go to is drag zoom, which I think is one of the more fun ones. So what I've done is given you a screen which shows you just a normal everyday screen. And normally if I click and drag left on the screen, it'll jump like that. So if you go to the left and you'll notice that the left hand pond that was down here has now disappeared off the screen and we've got a little right hand pond has come in that wasn't there before. So if I now click on the drag um, screen toll up here, you'll notice it puts an underline on it and this is what, what happens. Sorry, it's rather a dim screen, but what you find now is that if you do a left click drag, which in the past would have scrolled the screen for you, now it comes up with a selection. And if, as you've done, I've done here, you put the selection over a particular building, this little building in the uh, building, and then you let go of the click, it expands everything. So basically it's dragged your screen into a much higher level of um, focus of scaling um, and it automatically toggles itself off so if you want to do that again you have to toggle it back on again up here um, but it's actually quite a useful way of highlighting a specific building in a hurry you can just highlight you just click on the building and drag zoom on it away you go so the annotate layers item uh, just giving you a bit of pre-preparation here. I've got three layers all already created. So just to remind you, I got here. So if you go into the main menu along here, there's a tools button. One of the tools buttons is annotate. 
And when I put on annotate, it comes up and draws this column. So that's all I did here, a tools annotate list all. And there are three available. So now what we're going to do is to go into the uh, screen and I focused on our recreation ground, which is a nice big open space. And this is what it looks like when there are no layers on and there's nothing on. So if I click on the annotate layers button, it pulls up every annotation you've got in the system. Now by sheer chance, quite extraordinary really, um, all the annotate buttons I've got are for the recreation ground. But you can see basically, it's a very convenient way of switching your annotations on or off in one failed click. So handy, the annotate layers button. Again, it's a toggle. So if I toggle now off, that will go off again. So now we can go to the search layers um, icon, the little magnifying glass, click on that. And up in the top corner, you get the, a blank screen in which you can type whatever you want. And we're going to imagine that what we really want to know about is flooding. And we don't remember which layers tell us about flooding in a parish online. So you just type flood into the box and it pops up immediately with three available collections that contain the word flood somewhere in their system. So just out of interest, we're gonna click on a little down arrow in natural England. And you'll see it comes up with this screen, which is not particularly self-explanatory. So I'm gonna click on view legend to get the legend up. And it basically shows me that most of this yellow stuff is grade four um, agricultural land, which is basically um, arable grass land. And you'll see why in a moment. So if I go back to the screen, instead of clicking on natural England habitats, I click on the environment agency and come up with all these um, layers that contain the word flood. Um, I'm gonna select zone three and you'll see bang, this is what happens when it rains and the levels in Somerset. And remarkably, this shape of the water is very similar to the screen on the agricultural land use. Um, and that's because if you're going to flood the ground, the only thing you want to have in there is grass. Uh, and so these are all grassy fields uh, which grow really luxurious long grass, which produces really delicious milk, which is why Somerset provides so much milk to the rest of the country. And I do remember somebody um, asking on one of those sort of Quora forums on the internet, why does everybody ship milk in from Somerset to London? And the answer came back rather glibly because that's where all the cows are. <laughs> so not too many cows in London, rather a lot in Somerset. Okay, so <clears throat> what we've done then is we've gone through each of these icons. Um, I hope that they're all clear to you. What we're going to do now is move on to the mini menus, which uh, don't appear. By the way, most of this stuff is not covered in the knowledge base. Um, when there are bits that are colored, covered, I'll mention them. But uh, so far, all of this stuff is just um, you're supposed to find out by trying it out for yourself. So mini menus. So if you look at your regular column of layers in the left hand side, um, you can tell which ones have got layers turned on because they put a circle around the mini arrow, which is very convenient. So at the moment, I've just got three layers with, uh, sorry, three collections with layers turned on. Um, and what you have uh, in the ability here is if you do a right click in the collection layer, i.e. on the ones you're seeing here, you can toggle all the underlying layers on. That's the underlying layers in that same collection. So if I click on our asset register, I'm gonna right click here. Well, sorry, I'm gonna that right click. And it comes up with a little button that says toggle all layers, click on that. And then you'll find that in the asset register, it now shows, uh, it's got a circle around it to show that you've clicked something. It has no indication that you've turned on all of the asset register layers. But if we click on this mini arrow, you'll see that in fact, they've all got uh, check marks on them now and a whole mass of stuff has showed up on the map. So every layer in our asset register has been turned on. And I can right click in here and uh, toggle all layers to turn them off again. 
So if you now go into any one of those layers and do a right click, so right click in a collection layer turns on the toggle all, the right click in a in an individual layer will give you a mini menu of sorts. And the one that's most comprehensive is when you do it in a parish layer. So I've got my parish layers here. I've clicked on the first one. I've done a right click and up comes this menu. And this is all the features that you can get in this mini menu, all six of them. So when you do this in other layers, particularly third party layers, i.e. not your own parish ones, um, you get many fewer of these. You'll always get at least one, which is usually the transparency slider, but you'll often get a filter as well. But you won't get the richness that we've got in parish layers. So the best mini menu is in your own parish layers. And I'm going to explain each of these now. So starting from the top, this, and we will go through each of these individually in the pages to follow. So we have a transparency slider, which varies the degree of obscuration of the main map. Um, add feature I hope you're all familiar with. This is how we create new uh, items on the map. Style <clears throat> is um, where we do all the color coding labels and highlights and things. Tables, I think, again, you've all seen the table view. Go to extent is, has not been explained before, but basically it, I find it a very useful little tool. Um, It'll turn on and adjust the map to just demonstrate every feature in the layer that you're in. So in this particular layer, we're in Graham's test point. Um, if we click on go to extent, it'll show every one of the test points and will adjust the scale of the map. If some of them are scattered over a wide area, it'll adjust the scale so that you can see them all. So quite handy for um, finding everything in any one particular layer. And then we'll spend quite a bit of time on filters because they are um, very helpful, but they basically help you drill down to get to a specific layer. All right, so when you open and click on any of these items, they initially refer to the layer that you opened in. So we started in test point. I'm now going to move on to um, the next one, which was the transparency slider. And at the moment, I set it at 100%. So basically, you see everything that the map has to offer. And obviously, as you uh, zoom in, you get more and more detail. But basically, nothing is uh, is hidden. The transparency is, is total. Um, if we go, you'll notice that I have no other layers turned on here. That's the only layer I've got turned on. But if I take exactly the same slider and move it down to zero, see all how all the detail is gone. All you've got left is the boundaries uh, and basically the boundary, the parish names. So that's all that you get. But the real use of the slider is when you link it to other layers as well. So if we're gonna go into here, what we've done is we've left the transparency on the map at zero. So there's very few map details. All you get is the boundaries and the parish names. But I've turned on the photographs and you get 100% strength of the photograph. There's nothing in its way. So on the next layer, Exactly the same thing. You'll see I've still got the photographs turned on, but I've now moved the slider for the transparency of the ordnance survey map to 100%, which means everything in here is brought up and everything from every other layer is, is crossed out or are not visible. So if you've still got two layers on and you move to a happy medium, you can see now that we're getting both the map information uh, you're beginning to get the names of buildings, you're beginning to get the names of towns, as well as the basic parish and boundary information that you had before. So you're getting some of the map information in, but you can still see the overhead photography. So the point of this being that you can adjust the obscurity here or the transparency to get what's a nice happy combination that suits whatever work it is you're doing. So if you need to be able to see both the photograph and the map, then this transparency slider is how you do it. So next picture, we've done a right click uh, on our mini menu and we're gonna click on the add feature. Now you've all seen this many times. So it pulls up a blank record in the feature editor and it defaults to the layer from which you started. So we were in Graham test point there uh, and that's the 
feature editor it brings up, but you do have the choice of selecting another layer if you want to. So even though you clicked on the add feature layer from, uh, on, on feature editor, sorry, from one layer, you get the chance if you want to, to switch to another one. Um, and then again, old hat to you guys, but you have a required name here uh, and you have a, a grayed out save button and the save button will not become live until you both completed the required name and you put the new feature on the map. So you're all familiar with that. Back to our little mini menu, we're now going to click on style. And up comes a complete new page uh, divided into three or rather four columns. Uh, so you've got style options, labels. Uh, this one varies depending on what you've got selected elsewhere. And then the fourth layer column is always a preview, which shows you what the impact is of what you've done. And that is instant, which is very, very convenient. So as you make changes in here, you can see them at once in the preview page, which lets you know what it is that you're doing and you can see whether you've had the desired effect or you want to change other things. Now, the individual details of this styling uh, can be quite complicated and it fills a whole training session. So uh, if you want to know more about signing, um, either come to a training session or come to a banter session or grab me at some other point. But uh, we're going to skip it for today um, just because we need to get through the rest of the uh, agenda. So style is where you really get the chance to um, bring some color into your maps, but also choices on what happens. So in our planning applications, if a, uh, an application is still under consideration, it's automatically purple, but as soon as it changes to rejected or um, accepted, then the color changes to either red or green. Uh, it's all done here. Neat stuff, styling. All right, next one is table view, which again, I hope that all of you are familiar with. So you get a table of the data in the layer from which you started. So we started the test point layer. Note that again, you can cho choose this if you want to. So it doesn't matter where you started from, you can actually get to any layer you wish to. Uh, we're going to go through uh, what all these do in a, in a second with the filter. So I won't explain them now. And I think you will run the course where we cover them anyway. Uh, but if you've got a whole bunch of features in one particular layer and you want to make some edit changes, then it's much more easy to do it in a table view than anywhere else. You can edit records in your table view. You cannot add new ones um, for all sorts of good reasons. So that won't be coming anytime, uh, but you can edit what's there already. Uh, very useful uh, feature, the table view. All right, next one down is the uh, go to extent, which we talked about. And I'm also going to talk about um, filtering. But what I've done in order to demonstrate this is change the layer. So we were on Graham's test point. We're now down on our planning applications for 2019. <clears throat> which uh, restricts them to rather fewer than we've got in 2021 or 22. So if you take a look here, you will see on the map, we've got one, two, three, four planning applications. Um, and the top village up here, Upton, has got the one underneath it. And the bottom load here is in the middle of the page. And we can go all the way down to little load uh, on the map. But if I now click on go to extent, remember the point of go to extent is to show you every feature in the particular layer that you're in. So I click on go to extent and the map changes. So you'll see now that Upton has come down a bit in order to make space for this one application up here to pop in. And the bottom one here has gone all the way down, little load has fallen off the bottom of the map because now we've got all one, two, three, four, five of our applications during uh, 2019 um, are now visible on the map. So again, go to extent, very helpful to show you everything, but it changes the scale of the map accordingly. So last one we're gonna do now is uh, click on filter. We're gonna stay in the planning applications layer. So the filtering that we're doing is gonna be based on that layer. So I click on filter. And basically 
uh, this is a bit of a complicated screen, but it just shows the same thing over and over. So when you click on filter, up pops this box here. And it's got three drop down menus and then each of these other choices is just to show you what they have. So in this first one on the right, I've clicked on the filter column up here and it's dropped down and showed you that you can pick any one of the columns available in this particular layer. So I'm going to click on application number, which takes us down to this one over here. So you can see I've got application number and I click on the, the um, choose operator field to give you these four choices. Um, you can take whichever one you want, but contains is the most general and is likely to capture most things that you want. So I've clicked on contains here and down in the bottom one, we're now typing HOU because that will show us just the records that uh, pertain specifically to a house. Um, and when you're ready, we click on save. And you'll see that the screen now has cleared and the only uh, record that comes up through the filter is the one that has HOU uh, in the planning application ID. So in the layer, you can notice a blue filter funnel has come up to show you that you are filtering and therefore um, be wary of the information that you're seeing because it's not everything, it's just the filter stuff. Um, very, very convenient, really. They're quite thoughtful, these people at Parish Online. So just to summarize where we've been to, we've been through the five menu icons in the second row in that top left corner. We've looked at the variations of what I call the layer mini menus. Um, so parish layers have got the most at six and we've been through all six. Um, and third party layers will have made way fewer. Some will have, I don't think any of them have got more than four and most have only got one. So now we're going to see the remaining mini menus. And again, this is a feature which is not documented um, anywhere in the, the knowledge base. So um, hopefully you are going to pick up on this from me. So I'm just going to take, I've zoomed in on this particular farm and I'm just going to right click on the farm here. Well, that right click. And up pops this little mini menu with three choices, copy, bookmarks, and add feature. Now the add feature is exactly the same as the add feature that you got from the, the mini menu from the layers. So I'm not bothering to explain it to you because um, you've got the information you need here. Copy and bookmark are a bit different though. If you hover over the mini menu here, just put your mouse on it, it'll pop up, we get another mini menu. And here we've, we've hovered over copy. So it says, you want to copy coordinates? Do you want to copy coordinates that long or do you want to copy extent? And basically what it's doing is copying the coordinates of the building in either British national grid mode, which is the one that Parish Online uses, or in the lat long mode, which is what um, people are used to, except it's in decimalized format, not hours, minutes, and seconds. So if you live at sort of uh, longitude, three degrees, six minutes, and 10 seconds west, you would expect to see three, six, 10, but in fact, what you get is 3.04697 or something like that. So it's slightly different when it's decimalized. And if you click on extent, it gives you the northeast corner and the southwest corner in coordinates of your screen so that it can be reproduced at any time. Now, the way that the system works is it automatically copies the answers to your clipboard. So you don't see anything. Um, what I tend to do just to make sure I've got what I want is, is copy it into the search field up in the top right corner of your screen, but that's neither here nor there. But I've just given you some examples of the outputs that you can get. So the coordinates in British National Grid format for the farmhouse uh, are those. The decimalized lat long for the farmhouse is here. Um, you'll all remember, I'm sure, that Greenwich is uh, the prime meridian, zero. If you go to the right, to the east, that's considered to be positive plus. But if you come left towards us in the west, then you need a negative sign for the west of Greenwich. And the extent then are these the opposite corners, bottom left and top right. 
Uh, when you've got these coordinates, you can feed them back in to the system and, and to show you the farm again. So we'll do that uh, later on in part of the, the uh, active session. So that was uh, the mini menu and you click hover over copy. Now we're gonna hover over bookmarks. And you will have seen this, this is exactly the same menu that comes up when you do the main view menu and add bookmarks. So it's a shortcut, if you will, to the same feature that you're already familiar with. Um, you can add a new one or you can use one of the existing ones that you've got to jump to that. You may remember that the, the really useful thing about bookmarks is that they automatically jump you to the correct layer the correct scale, the correct zoom, uh, the correct positioning of everything, the way that it was when you created the bookmarks, which is a huge time saver. You don't have to go around finding the right layer and then zooming into the right place. You can just jump straight to it. Um, and the other thing, which I'll just repeat for you here because it's uh, worth remembering, is the bookmarks are very personal. They stick with the account that logged in to Parish Online. So if you want to share them with somebody else, you need to have someone else either log into your account or what we do here in Long Sutton is I create a single account that every parish councillor can use. Uh, and then the bookmarks are all usable by everybody. Um, this is a multi-user system so they can all log in with the same account name uh, and the same password at the same time and the system couldn't care less. It just carries on, which is again, very useful. So that was the mini menus that you get from right clicking on a feature. In this case, we chose the farm, but you can do it with almost any feature within Parish Online um, and get those same choices up. So we're now gonna to switch to the very bottom row of items on the Parish Online screen. So I've just shown you here, this is uh, the bottom two rows, if you will. And you've got the, on the left-hand side, you've got the column of layers. So that's normal, doesn't need any explanation. Next to it, you've got these uh, obscure one of them, but there's three dots in the vertical row, which uh, leads you to a, another mini menu. Um, down here, this box will tell you most of the time who you've logged in as, and you can see I've, I've logged in as the parish council. Uh, so as that, you know, we all see the same thing, we all see the same bookmarks. Um, but it can be slightly confusing because it, it may read clear search text sometimes, which is if you've used the address space search box at the top. Um, and it's just a quick way of clearing that. So they couldn't find anywhere else to put it. So they put it down here and you'll see that later. So every map, no matter where you are uh, in the country, comes with a scale on it. And the scale is this bar here. And all it's saying is that this distance on this particular map is 500 meters. So you can sort of judge from there what the scale is by just looking at this ruler, if you will, and that tells you how far 500 meters is on this particular map. Now this changes as you zoom in and zoom out, and so does the length. We'll get into that in a second. Then this one here, very useful little icon. This is what I call a multi-use box because depending on what you do with this icon here, you click on it, it changes, you get different features. So we'll go into that. The same thing happens here with the toggle mask. We'll go into that at length. And then there's a service status indicator. If it's green, everything's in great shape. If it's got a red in it, then something's gone wrong. It won't be at your end. It'll always be at the parish online end. And then the little sort of notification bell here will change color if there are any recent updates and we'll show you what they look like. So that's the overall picture. Now we'll go through each one of these individually. So when you click on those three vertical dots, you get two choices coming up. The main one is geolocation. And this is in particular for use when you're on your smartphone and you're going through Parish Online on your phone and you want the phone to track you. Now this is great for when you're using your phone to take photographs of features in your parish. So if you need to have a photograph of every parish bench for which you are responsible or each street light or whatever, once their um, features in parish online, then you can take your phone out, go walking around the parish. And if you've got geolocation on, 
Parish Online will track you as you move about. So when you stop in front of the bench, Parish Online will be showing that same bench. You can then take a picture with your phone and you can upload it straight into Parish Online. Uh, it'll go in for that particular park bench or the street light or whatever. I, I think it's a really useful thing. Um, and I keep telling people that we liaise with the local school, let the school kids, when they do one of their sort of uh, snakes going through the village, they're out actually taking pictures of the bus stops and the grit bins and things. They think it's marvellous. It gets them involved in the community and it's, <laughs> it's the poor old parish park having to go and do it. So anyway, that's neither here nor there, but that's the geolocation toggle. It is a toggle that shows when it's on by a little check mark. I think the check mark comes up on this side, actually, but you can know whether it's on or off because there's a tick mark. Um, and that's the only indicator that you get. And really, there's no need for this at all on your desktop computer. I take it that that doesn't move that often, and therefore you, you don't need parish online to move with the, with the computer. But you do need it to move when you're on your phone. So that's what that's for. The remove overlays button will click on that and every layer that you've got turned on in the beige colored collections will turn off. Um, so it's a very useful way of just blanket removing all turned on layers. It doesn't make any difference if you've got things up in the green layers like the overhead photography or anything that's up there that stays turned on, but it does turn off everything in the beige layers. What you or I would call brown, but for some reason it's actually beige. All right, so we talked briefly before about the scales. So this is the scale indicator taken from two different snatch shots of different uh, scaled photographs or snapshots of the map. So 500 meters on this map is that long. And on this map, it's only that long. So clearly this is a much smaller scale um, than we have here. And in fact, you can see that the line of trees is quite thick. And here it's disappeared just down to a line of, of nothing. So scale indicator. Now we're into what I call the multi-use areas. So this one, as we said, normally shows um, the name of the user account that's logged in. But every now and again, you see, look, it suddenly changes from your user account name to clear search text. So this is where you can click to clear everything out of your um, search box up in this top right hand corner up here, uh, but only if you've actually got something selected up there. And it only works on the address space, not on the postcode. Um, so uh, it does be useful if you've got some clunky great address typed up in the address uh, in the search box, this is how you clear it. Um, but then the system will revert back to showing which um, who the user is. Well, when you finished. Second user area, the next one along the multi user area is basically uh, what you're using this icon for. You can either have the icon with a, a button in the middle or no button in the middle or a completely different shape altogether. And you just change these by clicking here and toggling them. So each time you toggle, you get a different answer here. And basically, those are coordinates of something. So if you've got the whole, <clears throat> sorry, not the whole, the, the, the button in the middle, that means you've got a point selected on the screen somewhere, which the system found for you because you looked for it with the address space or the postcode. So for instance, if you type in your home address in the top right hand corner and the system finds it, then your house will be uh, have a pointer indicated on it. And these are the coordinates, Eastings and Northings of the pointer. Uh, which is just a little dot, if you will, hence the dot there. If you toggle this and you remove the dot, then you go back to being the extents of the current screen. So you've got the uh, two coordinates of the bottom left corner, two coordinates of the top right corner. Um, I've yet to find out where you use that, but um, the system does provide it. If anyone comes up with an answer, I'd be very grateful to know. Uh, and finally, if you toggle again on this, then you get this sort of tear shaped or reverse tear. Um, and this is exciting because whenever you move the mouse, these numbers are going crazy. They, they basically track wherever the mouse is and you have to stop. 
and read it um, to find out. Again, I've yet to work out a need when I had to know that, but I think it's probably very useful to the people in Parish Online themselves, and they put it here just in case we can think of a use for it. But that's what this multi-use area uh, of the, the bottom row does. So then we move on to the toggle map mask. Uh, I'm going to give you examples of what this looks like when it works, so that they're coming up in the in the next slides. Um, but basically, there are two uh, controls here. One is a slider button. You turn it left to off, and you slide it right to go on, and that just turns the mask on or off. And then this one is a toggle button, which varies between light, dark, and white. Um, and the icon doesn't change. It doesn't. It's not like the one we just looked at. This always stays the same black and white uh, icon, but um, clicking on it will change what you see. And you have the option of being off, in which case there's no map masking. You can't see anything different from usual. Uh, the map just behaves as it, it, you've always been used to. If you turn it on and then you're in light transparent mask, um, you'll see that areas outside your parish are slightly faded from the parish itself. It's not always easy or obvious to see this, but it, it does happen. Um, and the idea is that when you're showing something that's affecting your boundary, the, the boundary mark is very clearly delineated by a different color for the outside property. Um, much more effective is having a dark transparent mask, which you get just by toggling this button again when it's on. Um, and a white mask equally trans, uh, effective, it really is a dramatic difference. Uh, and we'll show you what these look like. So this is a screen where the mask toggle is off and there's no difference between the various parishes. By the way, we're the one in the middle here and this is our surrounding parishes and they all look precisely the same because the toggle mask is off. Turn it on, however, and you get this slightly faded action here where the information is less obvious and the one in the middle is meant to stand out because this is your home parish. Um, can be usual, but I find most people are puzzled by this. They still call in and say, what's happened to my system? Half the screen has, has faded out. Um, and it, it particularly gets noticed when you're doing a print. If you've got a print that's covering borders, um, then having the mask on, which is an option in the print function, you can opt to turn the mask on. Um, it does highlight the difference when you're doing the printout. Uh, so next screen is we've put the dark mask on. And if you remember, we turned on the mask and we just toggled on this little one here to get the dark mask, dark mask. Oh dear. Um, and obviously this is much more dramatic highlight uh, and, and very clear and very obvious, very useful. Uh, and finally, the light mask, again, very dramatic, very obvious. You've cut out everything outside your parish. So that's masking. Um, I can't have think of a time where I've actually used it in, in reality, but uh, useful, particularly if you're doing printouts for people and they need to know where the boundaries are, very clearly delineated. All right, moving on to the right-hand part of the bottom row, we come up with this electric uh, lightning uh, icon. Normally it's green and when you click on it, it comes up with this service map status and shows you that all of these four services, the major services of Parish Online are running. Now we had an incident of yesterday when actually they crashed uh, for a while um, and all of it went red. And then very quickly, the first two and the last service came up, but the print service stayed red for quite a long time uh, whilst they were uh, battling it. And then eventually it's all gone back to green again. And to be fair to Parish Online, it's very rare that their system goes down. I don't know what happened yesterday, but it was only down for about 10 minutes altogether that something happened. Uh, but very usefully, they tell you about it here on, the, on your screen. So the last icon to, for us to discuss is the little bell, which basically um, lets you, when you click on it, up pops this latest upstate um, report. And it's just scrollable. So you can scroll down and see uh, what were the latest updates that they have reported on. Now, they go back quite a long way in time, so you can see that the latest one was the 22nd of March, so that's not so old. 
but the one before that was the 10th of August last year. So basically, this is where they let you know what is happening or what has changed before the, week, the monthly newsletter comes out. So the asset register export item is in uh, April's newsletter, but it came out on the notifications here um, in advance. So basically, once it's up and running in the system, they tell you about it straight away, and then eventually it'll come out in the newsletter. Um, I've forgotten what color this changes to when there's a new news item. I think it's either red or green. It might be yellow. But anyway, it doesn't matter. If it's a different color, then you've got a new um, update to read about and to get enthused and excited about. Right. So that's the end of the presentation. Just to highlight what we've done, we, we went into the top left corner, all the items in the second row. Remember, there were five or six icons there, and we went through each one of them. That's things like the home, the uh, um, drag, zoom, um, the turning on the layers, the annotate, and uh, doing a search. And you can also do a, you know, going backwards through previous screens. So then we went down to the layers, and we covered all the mini menus that you get from the layers. We turned on all layers. You turned off all layers in a collection by right-clicking in the collection layer. Or if you right-click in any layer itself, then you get uh, a mini menu, which gives you up to six options. It varies depending on which layer you're in. Um, and very useful features. We also then went on to um, show you what happens if you right click on a specific feature. I mean, we chose a farmhouse, but that's irrelevant. Um, and you can get another bunch of menus uh, from there. And then we've just been down to the bottom rows um, and showed you what happens. So there is uh, a couple of items in here that are covered in the community forum. So I've given you a link to the forum, but the vast majority are not at the moment. I'm sort of talking to Parish Online about filling in the gaps. Uh, but at the moment, this presentation is your best indicator of finding out what these things all work and how they do. Now, we do have some time available. So if anybody would like to have some bit of interactive fun, this is where you get the chance to play with Parish Online at your end, uh, whilst you need to keep your Zoom screen available so that you can see what I'm asking you to do. So for those who'd like to do this, then my challenge to see is like a quiz, really, how well you've been paying attention. Um, what you need to do is to add a feature to any layer that you like, but without touching the main menu or any of the mini menus that come up from the left column. So see if you can work out how to add a feature to a layer of your choice. Then I want you to add a bookmark for that feature so you can go back and find it later. And then we want you to copy the coordinates of that feature. And then just for fun, we're going to enter those coordinates back into Parish Online through view coordinates. And it'd be interesting to see if you point anywhere close to your feature. Chances are, if you've chosen a feature close to you uh, and you put it back into view coordinates, you'll find you've ended up somewhere in the North Sea or the South Atlantic. But that's part of the fun and we will investigate why. So if you'd like to get started on this, so you're going to add a feature to a layer without touching a main menu. You can add a bookmark for that feature without touching a main menu, and you're going to copy the coordinates, and then we'll plunge those coordinates back into view coordinates and see where we end up. So I'm going to leave that screen there. I might come up on another screen so I can see you guys. It's the only way I find out whether people are twiddling their thumbs or they're still grossly involved. So I'm probably going to log into the system as another camera.
So how's everybody doing? I mean, you're all muted at the moment. Yeah, so sort of slowly, slowly, slowly going through it. Um, I just, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, getting there. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure you weren't twiddling your thumbs and utter boredom. Oh no, 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 no. So uh, I will be. I, I know you mentioned the downloads earlier. I will be taking advantage of those because I then got a um, um, my login. I I because I only recently started here, so I only only got it yesterday while I was oh, right. in the office. So you're still so catching I, up with everything. I'm still so I am going to revisit the first couple of sessions too. Um, so there will, there, there will be a take of your downloads downloads in the near future. Okay, um, if you go to the links that I gave you in the original emails and yeah. they may yeah. have expired by now, but just let me know if they have done. And I'll oh, okay. Them. Right. So I've, I've saved them in a separate email folder. So I didn't. Um, yeah. I think the, well, the, the, the transfer system I use keeps them for about five days and then they expire. Okay, let me, no, it's I a can, piece of cake for me to put them back in again. Yeah. I can uh, let me know okay. if they've expired. Well, while, while you're actually there, I can test one now actually. Okay. Um, So this is really the first of all presentations that we do. So a large chunk of what we're going to show you is what the system can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you've got the presentation, you've got the video. Yeah, you might have, yeah, you might have heard that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 so it, yeah, it's, it's yeah, the 101 is, is, is there. So, so yeah, yeah. Good, okay. Yeah. So that's all that, so I was gonna- Well, that, that's those. the video, the presentation itself, it's a separate thing. All right, let me just uh, see so the slideshow presentation. Hold on, let me click that. Oh, no, that's gone. Yeah, you're yep. right. Um, okay, yeah. so I'll send you 101. Yeah, and uh, let me just check if uh, 102 is... Uh, uh, copy the presentation again. I think that's oh. gone as well. Uh, 102 has disappeared as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'll send you both. Yeah, those okay. that'd, be, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah.
Better, is any of this making sense or are you stuck? I have to confess, I'm probably not following the instructions. I'm going through quite a lot of stuff that we've done. So I'm sort of looking, I need, I need time to process it, but it is really, really useful. So I'm okay. enjoying it well, and it is useful, but I need to go back over the um, presentations at another time, so. Yeah, fair enough, that, that's good. Um, but basically the, the background to this is that um, everything you need to have is if you click, right click on a building or a feature. Yeah. That leads yep. you to these mini menus where you can add the new feature and you can do a bookmark. Yep. And then the feeding the coordinates back into view coordinate is fun because if you get the scale, if you choose the wrong format, then you end up, as I say, somewhere completely different. But it's quite an achievement to actually find you've got back to the building you started from. <laughs> these little things, <laughs> please, little minds. Well done, Tracy, you're all set. Yay, all right. Um, well, if, if Claire's going to go through it in slow time afterwards and Auntie is still catching up with the very beginning of uh, Parish Online, I won't take up your time altogether unless you need me to. Let me stop sharing. Uh, we're on to the official question and answer session now. So if you have any points that you want to make or queries to ask, now is the time. Uh, as always, I'm looking for suggestions for more training sessions. Um, if you look at the training page, you'll see I've started throwing in evening sessions for people who can't make it to the daytime ones. That's just an experiment. I don't know whether anyone will need it, but I've had a, a few queries about what do I do if I can't make it to the daytime ones. So you'll see that um, I'll send out the address with the email that comes out to you after this. But um, I have started adding in evening sessions, if that happens to be helpful to any of you. And now it's your turn to shout if you want anything or you need anything. Tracy, you're all set? Oh, all right, Newmarket is obviously humming along efficiently. Um, no, nothing, nothing for me. Okay, just, see, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, how are you doing? I'm Good. I'm I'm really interested. I'm going to be working on my allotment plots from last week and <laughs> okay, this week. Right. I'm going right. to do it a, a stage at a time. <laughs> okay. Well, so thank you great. very much. Um, I'll assume that we're done on this session then. Thank you very much for your time and your attendance. I will um, send out the video and the presentation and I'll catch up with your two previous ones, Anthony. Um, and see you all next time. Thank you Absolutely. for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you all. Goodbye. Bye. Have a great Easter, by the way. Thank you. You yeah. too. Bye bye. Cheers.